Let me be immersed in the water of your word. Let me be immersed. Let there be overflow, overflow, overflow. Oh Lord, breathe into me the inspiration of the Almighty Lord. Speak through me. Oh Lord, speak. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because you've opened up within me, Lord. You've opened up within me, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you for your overflows. Thank you for the flooding. Thank you for the opening of the gates. Thank you for the ascending and descending in your temple within me, Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you for joining in the mighty name of Jesus. For some reasons, uh, we are to do this teaching at home today. God does whatever that pleases Him, and He has the reasons for everything He does. We thank you, Lord, for this word. Uh, the title for today's teaching and this scripture that this title was taken from is in the book of Jeremiah chapter 7 from verse 1. But the title was picked from verse 2 and the title is stand in the gates of the Lord's temple so the um, scripture Jeremiah chapter 7 says the word came the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying stand Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah that enter in at this gate to worship the Lord. They stand in the gate of the Lord's house. And proclaim there this word. And say, hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at this gate to worship the Lord. That is uh, the book of Jeremiah chapter 7 from verse 1 downward. But the topic was picked from verse 2. I would not have said standing in the gate you know just to bring the title out but Uh, let's use it as it is being written. The word of the Lord always come into the house of the Lord through the gates. Through the gates. And God always um, God always um do a construction. So anyone
who can or who has been made or who has been chosen or elect elected to stand at that gate to start at that gate Pastor Sophie, if you can help me do some the summary comments because you know there are some things that and we are going to end there when what is called the inheritance of God you have it the challenge is that if you have not have worked in the portion of the inheritance or mastered it, you may not have the wisdom and the mouth to teach it. So You know, the Bible says in the book of Luke, in the book of Luke, okay, in the book of Acts, sorry, in the book of Acts, Chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of that scripture says, Let's open Acts. I don't plan to go in this direction, and I'm going to go back, but let's just follow. After chapter 1, verse 1 says, The former treatise of high maid, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. So, you cannot teach what you have not practiced. Though you can have uh, the inspiration of, of the Lord to speak out what you've not done, and that will come out of prophecy. I mean, prophecy in the area of announcing to you, to you personally, what or the new stage or the new uh, level. God wants you to embark on the journey of inheritance. So we have the inheritance. All of us, we have the inheritance of God. God has given us Christ, which is our inheritance. But how many of this measure of this inheritance have you done, practiced? For you can teach them. Let me leave it now because we are going to end this teaching in here. Returns. Pastor Sophie, please let me do the summary. Comment to point. God bless you. So in the book of Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 1 
to stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah that enters enter in at this gate to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, verse 3, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doing, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Amend your ways. So, the one who have who has the capacity to stand in the gate or at the gate? NIV use at the gate, KJV use in the gate, which I believe is the same. Anyone who has the ability or capacity, or anyone who is capable of standing in the gates. must have been worked on by the Lord. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house. You know, Jesus has not died and uh, rose in the Old Testament. So, um, what was hidden? What was hidden What was hidden was brought. Out. What was hidden before the fall of man was exposed. So, if you see many things that God says, or is, or yes, many things that God says in Old Testament, because the hidden land was brought out and it's there. Let's check it. You see the whole Genesis 1, Genesis 2, Genesis 3, they are, they are things within every man, including the Garden of Eden, they are within man. I will not, you see all those scriptures I was talking about in Genesis 2. This thing I always do it in, in house. Let's say from Genesis 2 that that those heavens and the heart were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, you know, let's start from a verse 4. These are generation of the heavens and the heart when they were created. And every plant of the field, you see, all those plants of the field, these are things that are within man. These are the things that are within the land. Or the house of God in man. Every plant of the field before it was in the heart. You see? Before it was in the heart. They were within. They were not exposed. They were these plants are not plants literally. They are not physical plants you see around. They are not. And every plant of the field, field 
yeah, it's not field where you play football. It's not the field called the park here in the UK. It's not. Field where you can sit down and have nice time with your friends. No. It's not the field where you play football. Man, you field Barcelona is not. These things are with. He said, before this generation of the heavens and the hearts, when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the hearts and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the heart, and every herb of the field before it grew. So these things are, or these things were real in the unseen realm. Very, very real. But this is not the verse I really want to go to. I just want to expose it a little here. Now, when Adam eventually disobeyed God, disobeyed God, something happened in Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. It says, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, let's he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat it, and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden. So, he sent him from the Eden garden. To till the ground. So, God sent him away from the unseen realm. So, man at this time, this Adam before the fall is what is called the Eden man of the heart. The Eden man of the heart. A majority of us our eating man is caged and our outward man is free our eating man so god banished Adam. He banished Adam from his temple. Bible says our body. Now, body is not this physical thing you are looking at. Body here is Christ, the old temple of God. Is Christ. It was Moses that God used to expose. The temple of God to us. We have the house, the court, only place, and the most holy. And these are the three faces of God in His temple. So Christ is the temple of God, made for man. So, what God did was that before Adam will stretch his hand and, you know, you know, um, and eat, put his hand and eat from the tree of life that is in Christ, that is in us, that is in the temple of God. God banished him from the unseen 
Rem. Called the Garden of Eden. And this Garden of Eden is in the temple of God. Because the Garden of Eden was on the hearts. And let me tell you, if you go back to where I read initially, it said before it was on the hearts. So it was in the heaven. The Garden of God, it was in the heaven that was designated upon the hearts. And this hearts, too, was not the physical one. Our physical man lives in right now. Because the Bible says, the, And God created the heavens and the hearts. Heavens and the hearts. So the heavens and the hearts that God created in Genesis 1 1 is still forever. But the present heavens and the hearts after the falling of Adam is the one that God says he will pass away. But the one in Genesis 1 1 will come out. I don't know where I'm going this direction, oh God. But I just want you to you to see that the man of the heart, the unseen Adam, was once living in the heavens that was placed on the unseen heart. So when they banished him, when they when they, when they when they banished him and appeared, he appeared on the physical heart. And he appeared with his physical body as a physical man. So his spiritual man was caged. But his physical man was free. And today all of us. We relate more on our physical man than our spiritual man. So when the Lord is saying in Jeremiah 7 that start in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there his word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah. It was written to them physically. So most of the things that happen in the Old Testament. They are physical things that God cannot really dwell there. You know, God can dwell or and God will dwell in the physical heart when the spiritual heart and the spiritual man hmm? when the physical spiritual man and the and the spiritual heart has been built and in alignment with the heavens. So the garden of God was in the unseen heart or spiritual heart. And one of the reasons, one of the ways you know that this heart we have is also both spiritual and physical is because if evil spirits pass, you cannot see. If only if angels pass, you cannot see. If they pass beside you in this house, you are in this place, you are sitting, standing, you cannot see them. So, for the reason why you cannot see them, is a sign that physical this heart is still spiritual and physical but we relate with what we can touch 
down who we cannot touch. So, God was using Jeremiah 7 to paint something to us. So, when God speaks to you or me, the word really goes more on spiritual one than physical one. But we understand it with our physical environment. Praise the Lord. So, it says, stand in the gate of the Lord's house. So, when the Lord is saying the Lord's house, here, it's not really mean your church, your local church. Nor does it mean is a where you map out in your house, put a altar, or you call it a altar of praise. It doesn't mean all these cathedrals you see around. Those ones will be recognized in heaven if your uh, place of worship is 100% intact. This scripture is coming to my mind. First, second, third time now. It says uh, in the book of Psalm that um, unless the Lord builds the house, unless the Lord builds is the house. Anyone who is building physical house, they are building it in vain. And it can also mean that unless the Lord builds your temple, anything you like put in that temple, you are only building it in vain. It will not result to anything. It is the Lord who can build your temple within you. So we say, stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim the earth, this word. So it's only one that God has already made. It's only the man that God has made that can stand. That can stand in the gate of the Lord's house. Now, hear me. It is Holy Spirit that stand and build you so that you can be the image of this holy of the Holy Spirit to stand and build others. If you are a person that you are not building your members or the followers of Christ that God has drawn to you then it means that two things can only happen is either you skip glasses of God or you finished and you God's entangled with the word along the way. So Holy Spirit will build you, appoint you and commission you to now build those that God has drawn to you. So if you are not doing that, it's either you are got distracted or you skipped classes. You have carryovers in the realm of the Spirit. The carryover that Adam had Was that he never ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and of sorry, he never ate from the tree of life. So he could not finish 
God's University. He could not finish in the University of God because he was in the garden, he was in the house of God. So he had carryovers. So, and because he had carryovers, automatically everyone that become or came as Adam offsprings already had carryovers waiting. Even before you were born, there are carryovers waiting for you and me. And he never just had carryovers. He had... So, number one, he had unfinished business with God. Number two, he had... Uh, he had... What the Bible calls yokes and burdens. Out of disobedience, he had yokes and burdens. You know, you can go to university and have carryovers. You have grace to do the carryovers. And if you don't do the carryovers, is that that you drop out? Or they drop you out along the way? Or they give you, in my own university that I went to, they will give you something it's called um, a certificate like you just passed through the university. They will not give you the certificate that you finished. That you just passed through this university. I've forgotten the term they use for that certificate. So how will you get a job with that kind of certificate? I, I was once a student of this is also university. Praise the Lord. But with God, when you don't finish, so Adam, okay, let me put it, Adam didn't just finish the course, the courses. But he also had yokes and burdens. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Say, come unto me, all ye. So now we didn't just uh, have carryover waiting for us, unfinished courses of God. We also had uh, burdens and yokes from the kingdom of darkness because of sin and disobedience. See, Psalm 51 says, you disobeyed me and you sinned. You know, sometimes you prepare your texts. You prepare your verses. But since you don't know how you are going to speak, then God begins to change this scripts <laughs> say um say from verse 1 i have made it upon you god according to thy loving kindness according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies and blot out my number one transgression. It's not sin. The first one is not sin. Transgression. He said, "Wash me thoroughly, thoroughly. Wash me truly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin." So, before you get to sin, you have what is first called transgression. That transgression is a breaking of the rules of God. The iniquities 
is uh, uh, iniquities are the blessings or the causes in uh, in um, things that you relate with in the tabernacle of Satan. They say you disobey and you sin. So 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 disobedience is the is transgressions in action. Disobedience is breaking of God's lay down laws, rules or precepts or guidelines. You know, if you want to open a website or you want to join something, they will say um, uh, you should mark something that has to do with that. You have read the rules and guidance of this agreement. And most times, we just click it. We don't read those things. But you know, when they begin to hold you in account of breaking that rules, they will refer to that thing you just click without reading. That is where their powers are loaded. So, God was talking to Lucifer. Say, you disobeyed and sin. So, sin is not the first thing. Disobedience is the first thing. Is the act of disobedience that causes sin. Sin is the ending part of all the wrong things you've done. Sin is the acting part of disobeying God, of breaking God's rules and laws. So, sin is deep. Is very deep. So the ending part, the results, what can we see? They will say, let's go and have, open the file. Let's go and check the content of his sin. But sin is not the uh, sin, sin Disobedience comes first before sin. So when Lucifer, let's check it. Uh, which scripture? We have two scriptures for uh, Lucifer. I think we have Isaiah. Is it Isaiah 14? And we also have Isaiah 14, where he talks about are we, are we, are we, are we exalt, how we do this. Then we also have um, he says you were blameless. You were blameless. In your ways, as uh, Ezekiel twenty eight. So you will see in Ezekiel twenty ways twenty eight where it talks. Okay. Uh -huh. Ezekiel 28, let's start. Um, okay, let's start from 16. 
Okay, let's start from 15. He said, you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness, your wickedness was formed in you. So, the first thing that was found in him was wickedness. So, wickedness proceeded towards violence. You see, he said, till wickedness was found in you. Then verse 16 said, through your widespread trade. So he started trading on wickedness. And don't forget, this is not physical heart. Because the Bible says you were in Eden. If you check from verse 13, you were in Eden, the garden of God. This is not physical heart. This is the spiritual heart. So ha, ha, Lucifer used to come to the same garden of Eden that Adam was. But when he used to come here, there was nothing recorded about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When he used to come to Eden, darkness has not come upon the face of the heart. The record of Genesis 1-2 downward had not been in the heart. So, no one has ever uh, studied and comprehended darkness. But darkness was somewhere hidden in the heavens. Because he said, till wickedness was found in you, where was this wicked spirit hidden? Because this is not, to be honest with you, I'm saying this is not, because this is not part of my, this is my personality, it's not what I prepared for. But when you pray, before you start a teaching, God takes it over. These are, see, my, I'm beside my phone. These are, I have my scriptures prepared for this teaching, but this is not me. Even with that scripture, it's still not me because we are inspired. But when you begin to touch deep things, realities behind the scene matters, God will begin to open your hearts into many things. So, the wickedness was for you through your wise trade, widespread trade. So, he started trading with wickedness. He said, you were filled with violence. He was filled with violence. But there was no record of sin. <laughs> the record of sin came when he acted it out. So you may be breaking laws of God within you, but you still have opportunity to go to God. In James 1 says, James 1 says, Where it says, if you pass through a temptation, go, there is still a way. I know it. I understand. Um, okay.
Those brand are in jail temptation, for when he strikes, he shall receive the crown of life, which Lord has promised to them that loved him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. For every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it brings back to sin and sin, when it's finished, bring fat for death. Mm, where is this scripture? Where is that verse? Okay. The way of escape. Okay, it's in First Corinthians thing, that thing, not James. First Corinthians. Okay. First Corinthians ten thirteen says, "There has no temptation taking you." But such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But we, we, with the temptation also make a way of to escape, that he may be able to bear it. You see, so that's First Corinthians ten thirteen. So, you see, he said, he said, um. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created. The wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, trading with what? With, with, with the wickedness, you were filled with violence. Violence came because it was, it was desperate to take. You know, when he was saying, I will take, I will do this, that was when wickedness was found in him. But he has not acted it. So when he began to hack it, he began to get desperate about it. And he began to mobilize other people to achieve the throwing God. That is what brought sin. So the first thing was that was uh, he was transgressing the laws of God. And, and and then iniquity came. Just like Bible says, faith comes by him. Also, iniquity comes when you are transgressing the laws of God. So when you are breaking the laws of God, is within. You know anything that is within, you cannot see. So the heart is within. The heavens and the heart are here. They are within. They are within. The Bible said the kingdom of God is not what you see of or see here and there. He said, but the kingdom of God is within you. Is within. But that doesn't mean that there is no heaven somewhere. It's just like you have the atmosphere of Jesus. You have the presence of Jesus. You have the room where Jesus is in my father's house are many mansion. This father's house is not even that is up there. This heaven is the one within. I'm not saying the kingdom of God is not in the heavens up there. But the heaven that is up there is also here. So the, the body, your body as a temple of God is 
that temple is here. If you go to the hospital, you know, they they open belly, they open many things. They cannot see this. They can only see the physical uh, things that they can relate with. Even they can see blood. They can pour blood away. But they don't know the power of that blood. They say the only thing that scientists has ever discovered is what is where the word you speak, where it comes from. They've searched everything, but they don't they cannot get down. So it makes them to know that God past gods. So God started talking about inside relating spiritual thing in physical way for physical people who have uh who are no more in the spiritual or unseen hearts. So and he started saying that because through the falling of the first Adam, all of us we are indebted to transgression, iniquities, and sins. There are some acting of sins that Adam did through the fallen Lucifer. So the pattern of what uh, the pattern or the pathway that Adam walked was well, the same pathway that Lucifer walked that was before they banished him from heaven. Imagine, imagine they banished Lucifer from heaven. Revelation 12 said they, they hauled him down. And he said, oh, they hauled me down. Okay, I'm going to do things that will make man to be banished from his inheritance. Because Lucifer was in Eden. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 28, 13 said, you were in Eden. He was in Eden. So he once had the inheritance of God. The inheritance of God is found in the house of God, in the temple of God, in Eden. So I believe the tree of life was in that Eden. And the scenario or the scenes that God gave us. The things that we can imagine in the Bible that God gave us to describe the garden, the proper or the, yeah, the, the, the realities of the garden is in Revelation 22, from verse 1 downward. Praise the Lord. So, now, let's go back to our Jeremiah and I read down and I relate it to our... Yearly times, then you finish this teaching today. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 7. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim here the war, this word, and say, Don't forget, I said at the time, Holy Spirit is at the or in the gates of the Lord for us. And is in the gate to teach us all things about our inheritance. We all, if you become born again today, you have the inheritance of God. If you were not born again, so let's say you become born again today, you have the inheritance of God. You were in the world yesterday, you have the inheritance of Satan. He has. There is an inheritance of Satan. Christ is the inheritance of God for us. Why Antichrist is the inheritance of Satan for those in the world. And he said, you were blameless in your ways until iniquity. So until Lucifer switched into the temple of evil or of darkness. Iniquity was never found in him. So, now, 
after Adam had sinned, he was still in the garden. He was still in the garden. That's what Genesis 3.22 was saying. Then they what? They banished him. So that he would not put his hand and eat and became irredeemable forever. That's what Lucifer is right now. Lucifer cannot be redeemed. Because Lucifer He said, he, he said you were blameless. Adam was not yet uh, become a blameless man. What makes you to become a blameless man is that you have to eat. So Lucifer had eaten. When you become a blameless man, then you are redeemed forever. So that you are in Christ, you've not yet been redeemed. Because when you've been redeemed, you cannot cross back. Lucifer was created and made. See, I don't know what to say next. It's not, don't think like I, I crammed this thing. What I just said right now, before I said it, I don't know that was what I wanted to say. <coughs> Check your Bible. Lucifer was created and made. Lucifer was not formed. And he saw somehow that Eve was created and made also, but was not formed. It's so surprising to me. Hmm, Holy Spirit, thank you. And but Adam was created and formed, but had not been made before he fell. So you see, it's only who, one who was created and formed. Before he is made, that can be the head of the one that was created and made before his form. That's why we are the head of Satan now. So, God brought all of us through Jesus that was not created. Jesus was not created. <laughs> he brought us through Jesus that was born. He was the essence of God. He was born and he was formed and he was made. He was made and became he, I mean, I mean he became uh, one who cannot cross back. The same Jesus you saw when you were, when he was on heart, is not the same Jesus right now on the throne. So, Lucifer was created and made and sat on the throne. But he never understood how the throne works. He didn't have experiential knowledge. He didn't have any experience at all on how to walk but he see himself walking Ezekiel 28 verse uh, 14 say you were anointed as a cherub as a guardian cherub for so I ordained you you were on the holy mountain of God you walked among you walked among the fearing stones. He walked among. 
as a finished object. But he didn't understand it was not formed. He related with powerful angels. Fearing souls are powerful angels. But he seated on the throne that was dedicated to him. <coughs> but he didn't aim. <coughs> he became blameless because he was made. He never walked like all of us are walking to be made. So he didn't have the experiences, the cry, the difficulties, the trials, you know, to, to be perfect. He was just made, he was made to be perfect. When you are made, you will be perfect. Or when you are made, you are already a perfect man. So Lucifer was made to be perfect. It's just like you buy a phone that has been made. And the only way that this phone can work function is to keep doing, following the guidelines. That will make it to work. So it was just following guidelines. It was made a blameless and holy entity. And it was in the it was in, in hidden. Just to see the rules. These are rules, you know, these are rules, these are rules. So it's easy for him to break those rules. And that was the same thing that happens to the children of Israel. They were chosen. So when you are chosen, <laughs> so the children of Israel were chosen. Chosen is like someone that has been made. But they don't have, they've never stayed in the holy temple. They only come, bring a lamp to transfer their sin to the lamp for one year and come again. So they don't have spiritual experiences of growth. And they kept breaking God's laws. They kept defying God's laws in their hearts. Jesus, God said ten times, or is it seven times, these people are spoken. They have defied my temple. Now, see what Jeremiah was saying. He said, Thus says the Lord from verse 3 of us, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings. You see? They've been chosen. They've been chosen. Meaning that they've been made blameless in the sight of God because of their forefathers that have worked with God. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, these ones walked with God. These ones walk with God. They have experiential knowledge of God. They practiced it. They comprehended it. They walked it. And they teach those things. So, they, these ones were formed and made. Though so there was no Holy Spirit at that time in them, but they walk in the way of the Lord. They have this fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
in the same proverb, he said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. They have the fear of the Lord, which became, became the beginning of knowledge. You can see uh, in Isaiah 11, it says, the beginning of all the spirit of the Lord is wisdom. On the list. And the ending of the seven spirits is the fear of the Lord. So, he said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, the last on the list, which is the seventh one, is the beginning The fear of the Lord is the beginning. So, that is the last on the list. According to God, in the Old Testament, is the beginning. It is the portal to enter through before they can start. The first on the list, which is the last to them. And Bible says, Christ is the wisdom of God. And the power of God. So, in New Testament, they cannot get to the wisdom of God until they trade with the fear of the Lord. So, let's go. He said, This uh, trust ye not in lying words. The reason why God was giving them these words is because they were not formed. They were chosen. They were elected. They were not formed. They were not formed. They were only chosen. They were in the sight of God. They were blameless. But the only thing is that if God makes makes you a blameless man, you should stay. You should stand, or you should you should stand from that part, from that position. But they kept falling back. They kept falling away. And this world kept coming so that they can stand back. But they kept falling. Now see what it says. Trust ye not in line words. Saying the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord are this. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doing, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods in your hearts, then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. You see, so they were coming and going. They are not dwelling. They are not staying there. And many of us today, we come. Today we'll be spiritually minded. Tomorrow we will be carnally minded. So it's more like we. It's not. It, we are more like these people. We come and we go. We don't stay. We don't stay. Today we obey God. Tomorrow we disobey God. Today faith comes. Tomorrow fear. And the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. And what brings fear is disobedience. They, we keep breaking. We keep, we keep transgress. Breaking God's laws. But let's show us. Let me show us what obedience brings. The first one he said, if you if you can do all these things, I will cause you to dwell in this place. In the land. This place is where? The land. That I gave to your fathers forever and ever. This is this land is what is called inheritance. When I was trying to make the title of this teaching, 
I wanted to say obedience precedes inheritance. Or obedience is you uh is uh if you obey God you will have your inheritance. You have it but you don't have it. You have it downloaded in your spirit man, but you cannot it is still not yours. You've not start take to trade with it. It will cost you your life to have this his life, which is his, which is your inheritance. Let me repeat myself. It will cost you your life to have his life. His life is your downloaded inheritance. It's been downloaded, but it is not yours yet. Practicing what has been downloaded in you makes becomes yours because you begin to understand by practicing you begin to understand what the details of this blessings now let's go to Deuteronomy 28 Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to 14 Give us a list of what God will do if you are diligently. Hacking me if you observe, if you observe these details, these are the details that are uh, the 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 content of your inheritance because you can say i have inheritance oh my father has given me inheritance you see you have this inheritance on paper on script you have you have this printer called the volume of the book written about you but do you understand have you read it have you have you studied it have you engaged with it? That is it. So, Deuteronomy 28 says, And shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do. So, you have to read the script. You have to understand, you have to read the volume of the book written about you. Then you have to observe it. You have to attach your consciousness to it. So what you do daily must be according to what is written in the script or on the script. In the script. You see, it's the volume not one page, not 20 pages, volume. Jesus also read his own. I come to do thy will, O God, to the volume of the book written about me. All these commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the hearts. Hmm. So if you are not yet being set above all the nations of the hearts, then you are not hackling diligently. In observing to do the volume according to what is written in your scripts. So, what are the things that are written in your scripts? They are the details of your inheritance. So, now when you say 
uh, our inheritance is Christ and Christ is in us. It's like saying you have the manual, you have the scripts. Let me look for a book here. So let's say you have this. This is not a book, this is a diary or you know, or a jotter or something like that. But let's just assume this is a book. I don't have any book here apart from my Bible. Um just forgive me. Let's just say this is a book. So your father gave you this book. He said all the inheritance. You know the Bible says in Proverbs 13 22. Proverbs 13 22 says Proverbs 13 22 says Say a good man or a good father will leave thirteen twenty two. Say a good man leave it at inheritance to his children's children. A good man leave it at inheritance. So God is our father and he leave what he returns for us through his son so we are his all of us are his children's children we are his grandchildren So his first his first son and the only son that's ever became or become a son to him that finished the script. The script didn't finish on the cross when I said it is finished. The script finished when he went to hell for three days and collect the key. Of death from Satan and rose. It was when he rose that the war finished. For us. So all of us now, if you come to as the offspring of the last Adam, we don't have carryovers. We don't have any carryovers because the last man has finished the carryovers that the first man left behind and we don't also have anything called uh, the result of disobedience of the last of the first man of first adam which is yoke and bodies the only one that god says you will have you should come to him and collect is is uh the blessings and the workings of ritual life of life see i will give you rest our resting is the tree of life I will give you rest. My own yokes and body are the results of you know eating from the tree of life. Because you know he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and he had body and yokes. Despite that, he still had unfinished business with God but Jesus finished the business with God and also um, had he said he overcome I will give him the tree of life so Jesus had the tree of life and there are blessings you know given to him rewards given to him by his father
God wants you and me to be made and stand and be able to stand in the gate of his house. You have to dwell in the house before you can stand in the gate that leads to his house. Anyone who can stand in the gate or at the gate that leads to his house is the one who has earned the house as an inheritance. You know, you have you have a downloaded house. It's not the same thing as earning the house. Jesus earned the house. Jesus earned Christ, and he added Christ to his name. God set him above all the nations of the hearts. See, all these blessings from verse 2 shall come on you. So when you are enthroned, there are blessings. The first thing is you will be enthroned. The second one, enthroned, I mean is that you will be set above all the nations of the earth. And when I'm talking about nations, I'm not talking about Indian, America, Nigeria, United Kingdom. No. <coughs> nations. There are nations in the realm of the Spirit. There are nations in the realm of the spirit. Nations. <clears throat> when you are seated above those nations, then automatically you are seated above physical nations. That's why when we are enthroned, our enthronement is not physical. Even there are many <coughs> people who are enthroned. But they are janitors. They are, they are drivers. <laughs> In the physical hearts. They don't really know much. They, they are not known. But whatever they close in heavens shall be closed on earth. Whatever they lose in heavens shall be loosed on earth. <clears throat> These ones have become <clears throat> have the name of Jesus of the, or the name of God has been written on them. <clears throat> I'm not talking about someone who can open the gates by prayers or call the name of Jesus. No, this one has embodied Jesus. They have become Jesus. Because in, a, in the body of Christ today, many people can open the gate and close the gate. And they are breaking the laws of God daily. I don't want to really point to prime ministers. I'm pointing to sons in the makings. Because you can't become a man minister if you are not yet a son. It is your formation of the son that gives you voice to speak, to minister to people. Ministers are those who have all chance to teach others what they've learned or learned in Christ. In Christ, in the temple of God that is within them. And when you are learning, it is your spirit man that is learning. And this your spirit man is what is called man. Without your spirit man, you are no one. You are nobody. You can be somebody upon the earth, but your spirit man is caged. There are many wealthy people around the world. They have possessions. They have money. They have wealth. But they know that they are empty because their spirit man is caged in the kingdom of darkness. 
So why do they have to be getting worried that they are empty? How can you have everything and you are still saying you are empty? They are known, you know, physically they are, it's, it's more or less like they are seated, he said, uh, is, they are set above all the nations of the earth. As in, when you mention their name, everywhere upon the earth, they know that name. So it's more like they are seated, they are, they are seated on the earth. But their spiritual man is beneath. Even, there are some places, there are some What we call heavenly places. So let's call hellish places in the kingdom of darkness. Then, I mean, there are places, positions. Then they are not, if they check the percentage, let's say, let's call this position percentage. They are in maybe 1%. So they are beneath. Why? Because they broken God's laws. When you break God's laws, hmm, you will be open to Satan's wealth. When you break God's laws, you are open to all kind of things. Check around you. Even with sons that have names, these days, how many can you count? And if you can count these ones, are they known on, on the face of their hearts? But these ones, there are some that are known upon the unseen hearts. But they are not known on the physical heart because their place is upon the unseen heart. But there are some, they are known on the seen heart, physical heart. But they are not known in the unseen heart. Why there are some that are known both in the unseen and physical heart? So sometimes God will not set you above the whole heart at once. It has to do with hacking diligently. to the voice of the Lord, to observe. So he will be giving you, even in the unseen heart, he will be giving you, that's why some, someone, a minister, that has been made a son, or that is still in the formation of, the, of becoming, or of being made a son, is known in some nations, but is not known in other nations. No matter how you see him on YouTube, in Christian radios, in Christian televisions, there are still some places they don't know him. Because the more they extend you know, the heart that God has given to you, the more God extends that heart, the more laws and uh, rules of engagement that you must observe and do. Promotion spiritually is higher responsibilities. Higher. Let me use, I like to use myself as an example. 
you can call me pastor but i'm not a pastor from the beginning my calling is a teaching i have a teaching calling and i've been in this thing for how many years now the first time i taught in the church was in two, was 2001 I went to my pastor. I said, God told me this and I need to teach it. And he said, What's the title? And I gave him. I said, Hmm. But when we when I finished the teaching, he came on the podium and said, This, this is the same word, title that God gave him. But he said he never that what he heard today, the man was crying. 2001. But before that time, I've been seeing scroll concerning my life when I was in primary one. I can't forget. I went to primary one in Nigeria in one state called Obu State, Akure. This is a popular school called Alagbaka Primary School. That time I used to see myself walking on the passage of these classes and I would be seeing uh, uh, evil powers, you know, sending darkness to me, you know sending darkness on the passage on the floor of these classes they'll be sending passage and uh, they'll be pushing they'll be sending signals of darkness to me and and with the light that i had by my one student what we even understand christianity you don't even understand what is light you don't even understand but this is something that you know say so say before you were born i knew you I've appointed you so that appointment has to do with a particular light that God has given you at that time though you don't understand it mm -hmm. so probably you know the kingdom of darkness has known that this one will become something it will become a specimen it will become uh, a handyman that God will use you know so them sending fire or darkness to me i don't even understand but sometimes when they send it and i still have stamina to keep walking in that direction they will send another one they will send and i will fall down and i'll wake up and i don't understand and i don't even know who to go and ask because my father at that time has not even been called or well, let me say he was he has been called but he's still trying to ignore this call so I don't even know who to call. Primary one student. How old I was that time? I should be maybe three or four years old. So I don't know who to ask. So I don't even know the script that are written about me. Say, before you were born, I knew thee. And I have what? Chosen you and I appointed you. So, with that appointment, there is a particular light that is in you, called Christ. Though you don't understand, but that light will be in you as a stamina to stand. And let me tell you, till today, my life from when I was two years plus, I've been having some difficulties with evil darkness I've been having some feelings in my body in the area of sin and I can really I can't explain so from my from that time you know two years let me say you are just being conscious of your environment so from that time till now, I've been fighting what is called the good fight of faith all my life. And I never, I can't even teach this thing because I don't even know who am I. I don't know why these things are happening to me. Most times, these things always start at the very young age. 
One thing I discovered in my life that I could not walk in the same way seen as I walk in. I have this fear of the Lord in my heart and I don't know that it's called the fear of the Lord. But I have it. It's like when I see my friends doing wrong thing, I can't follow. I don't know why, but I can't just follow them to go and do the same. I went to boarding school in my secondary school. Not the full secondary school, no, but three years. That's from SS1 to SS3. When my friend is in our school, I won't call the name, but in our school, we have something called downtown. Downtown is where you go and meet with girls and begin to toast them and you carry yourself to classes in the night. And, you know. But I can't follow them. I don't have this thing. I, I can't just. I just this. I just this test. Canal works, and I don't know why. Imagine you can't just find yourself doing what your friends are doing, and you don't know why. When I was in GS1, girls always come around me, but at that age, I have the wisdom of the Lord on how to maneuver myself from them. I'm tall and I'm handsome. Personally, I know. But I don't like, I don't want that beauty to, you know, get in me. Because most girls, that is where they get it wrong. They are beautiful and they are marriable and they begin to fall. After falling, 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 their beauty is still there. It's not fully gone. And they kept they will keep falling. But at that age, I can't. How good is it's like you have this small still voice telling you to the cities. They are around me. But I can't just walk in that way. And I believe that any all of us, you have a story like this. You don't even know who is God. You don't know there's a father called God somewhere. And you have the fear of the Lord as as old as two years old. So you'll be walking in the way of the Lord before your parents start teaching you the way of the Lord. So I became a teacher along the way. Even let me tell you, I found my calling along the way. In the time of trials and tribulations, I got my calling. But don't forget, I've been seeing things as old as three years old. So the calling had been there. What is calling? Called out once. When they go, called you out of the world. That's the first calling. God has rescued you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. So when the Bible says gross darkness covers the hearts, I mean the people and gross and darkness covers the hearts. I was in the midst of these friends of mine. But I I used to love to uh turn proverbs in my country. They will say a dog that walk in the midst of goats. We eat shit. I mean we eat poo. Meaning that a good guy that walks in the midst of 10 other bad guys will become a bad guy. I put that thing to be wrong. Because I have friends. You know, Satan will, will put bad friends around you. When I say bad friends, I don't mean bad friends, the contradicted one. As in the people that do the things of the ways of this world. You know, they are concentrated ones. But... I walk among them and I don't 
because I always have this thought in my heart to prove something wrong, even from the tender age. I can't lie. My father can kill. Eh? He can kill you because of lie. He used to tell us that Satan would teach, would tell you to disobey God. But when he was with Satan, Satan would tell them not even to touch a woman. So if Satan are, are telling his agents, people working for him, not to sin, but he's tempting you to sin. The first time he said that, I said, what? When my father, for when I was in the kingdom of darkness, working with Satan, he never had sex in his life until he got married to my mom. Or let me say, before he got married to my mom, because I remember when God was calling him, he now began to do something he has never done in his life. So that, you know, he, he begin to do something that will, like a bad odor to God, so that God will leave him alone. He used to do party, do things that he was not done when he was an agent of darkness. So if Satan can tell them not to do some things, but he can tell you to do some things, then something is wrong somewhere. It's after something. So, but the Bible says, you are the apple of God's eyes. So, you, you, I was in the midst of the people of the world. The body school I went to, let me say, all of them are bad guys. Bad guys and bad girls. Because the body school self can make you a bad person. You can love all kinds of things in that kind of environment. But I can't, I can't place it somewhere. I don't know. And you get to level and it became a lifestyle to me. I have to start developing on it. So from age one to my year, my age presently. I'm not saying I've not but in our hearts, we break laws. So in my heart, I've broken laws. But processing that breaking to the level of trading with it, acting it, I don't really have much. That I can say that I have acted. To lie alone is a problem, even till now, because it got to level aside developing on it. I can't do this. Why do I have to lie? But you know, when the Bible says breaking down imaginations, there are imaginations that flood our hearts. It's better you break it down before you begin. It begin to make you to break the laws of God. So there are many things within that you can that still running that you can still you know get out of it to the escaped route before it gets to sin. So you can transgress. I'm not saying you should be transgressing, I'm just saying that there are so many things within you that you can still cut. They will always when you find yourself you know, in temptation. There are rooms of escape. Yeah. So that it will not result to sin. When you resort to sin, when you act it once, you have opened a portal. You see, those evil spirits that were coming, I'll 
in, you know, let me tell you, spirit, I was telling somebody two days ago, spirit are accompanied, thought are accompanied by spirit. So if you see bad thought comes inside inside your heart, it comes because the spirit that is uh, holding that thought is around. So when you are here, don't and you are meditating and um, meditating on the word of God, Holy Spirit is so happy. And at the same time, when you are brooding with evil thoughts, the evil spirit that brought that thought is around, and that evil spirit wants to enter, but it will not enter straight. It will just it will just push in the thoughts. You begin to nurture it and begin to trade with it. Yeah, you know that thought alone has the potential to make you to do things but you have one power you can that power is called decision making within yourself you can decide not to do it so you see have power over satan over this thought flooding your heart and that is where the grace of god is is always there the mercy of god is always there the grace of god is always there so let us obtain, let us come boldly to the throne of grace to so obtain mercy and find grace. So the grace is there to, to be found. And the mercy is there also to open you to that grace that you need. Because at that time that evil thoughts flooded your heart, you need grace. To find grace. In, at that time, you, you need grace. Let us obtain mercy to find grace in the day, in the time of need. So that time, you need the help of God. So what mercy will do to you is to change your decision. But you must consider God before He comes through and flood your heart with light. So you can still cast down imagination. So let's go to blessings and I finish. I finish. Time has gone. To observe and to do all is commandment. All. Because the totality of the commandment of God is what your inheritance is all about. The Christ in you is the inheritance. The Christ in you is the totality of the commandment of God. Is it more? Is it uh, Moses brought loss <laughs> and grace, and Jesus brought grace, and now people are now saying like grace is not loss. See, the laws of God is grace. This grace is the laws of God. Everything that God said in Old Testament is still applied to us now. I knew that they could not observe those things, but he kept saying it because of us now in Christ. So this word is still important to us, even in Christ. When they say Moses brought law, is it Moses that brought uh, The commandment that God gave to first Adam was it Moses that brought it? No. There has always been laws and commandments, even from the beginning. There are laws that guide everything. There is a law that guides the sun that you see hanging up there. The moons, there are laws that guide them. In your house, they have laws. Laws like you should not touch a naked wire. It's a law. <laughs> it may have become part of you like, oh, no, don't touch it. And this is how God wants his laws to become part of us. So that you live in the midst of darkness. And you will not touch darkness. You will be in the midst of bad people. You can preach Christ and stand on the rock of ages. It will guide your life.
But don't touch a naked wire. Or don't put your hands on a heated stove. Don't call that fires, flowers, like when we were younger. Say, ah. No. See all these don't, 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 don't. You teach your children in the house. It's the same voice, like don't, that God is teaching us as his son and daughters. You see, if then I, so you can have the downloaded inheritance. But if you don't follow these things in Jeremiah 28, it will not become a reality inheritance to you. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake thee. Means that it will be too much. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake. The blessing will be masked. They will put you in that blessings. The blessing is like water. When you put you inside it and they cannot find you. If it has overwhelmed you. As in the old God will give you all the ass. And overtake the if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord. He said, Blessed shalt thou be in the city. And you know when God is talking about city, these are not physical city, but it is both spiritual and physical. God is saying spiritual things to carnal minded people that they can't even understand. They said they have eyes they cannot see, they have ears they cannot hear. They have mind, but this thought has never even crossed their mind. It has not passed through, it has not penetrated. This is a city of gold. And gold means what? Divinity. So what God when God gives you blessings? Is it seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Every other thing. See, the physical blessings will be added. When you concentrate on the spiritual blessings, the spiritual riches. He said, My enemy shall be your enemy will be my enemy. Your friend will be my friend. Anything that you, will happen to you and will make your spirit to go low, God will protect it. So if you have friends and family that you normally call around the world, even the one you've not called for two years, God will send angels to go and protect them. Because he knows that when you hear that kind of news, it will turn pour your heart, as in you will be so... And there are blessings of God every day. The assignment of God every day. So if you are if you have if you are weighed down your heart for a whole day, heaven knows that hey, something is wrong. How do we push this will of God to the, to the heart to this man that is not is not responding? Because he had that his friend that he has called for the past three years have died. You see, God will protect anything that is around you. That shall be blessed in the seed, that shall be blessed in the field. And I told you, the field was mentioned in Genesis 3 the other time. So, field, you should just seek field in the spiritual, seek nations in the spiritual, seek cities in the spiritual, seek. Uh, the enthronement of the spiritual. Speak, seek everything. If you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. It's not that if you seek me, you will find me. You, if you seek me, you will find some things. You will find some, some trees that are good for food and able to gain sight. That was, was 
what was in is in Genesis 3 that Adam saw. He said, When you seek me, you will find me. Those trees are still gods. But that is still not real God. Those lights are the light of God. It's the first light that you can relate with before you can relate with the light of God itself. Before you can relate with God, you first relate with some light that came from God. He said, if you seek me, you will find me. Those lights, you, they are still part of God. The work of the hands and the face of God, they are not the same. So you can find the things that are from the works of his hands. But you may not find the light of his face. You can find the light of his hands. He said, but when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. But if you seek me, you will still find me. But when you seek me with all your heart, then you will find me. The real me. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. <laughs> this is these are not children. They are also children. <laughs> the fruit of your body. Your body is the temple. And the fruit of your body is what? The fruit of the spirit. And the fruit of thy ground. Ground. And the fruit of thy cattle. The increase of thy kind. And the flocks of thy sheep. In Genesis 1, you see that God created fishes. He created cattle. He created animals. He created everything. But in Genesis 2, he said, none of them has appeared upon the earth. So when we're talking about sheep and cattle here, eh? They are not physical ones. Let's leave that for that day. I've already, my time has is already gone, but I have to finish this teaching. I'm, I just have to say it so that if you're kind of person like me that I like to understand everything, if I see sheep, I begin to meditate. God, what is sheep? If I see lamb, I begin to meditate. You see how Jesus used to call all of us is lamp. And he will call himself the son of man. <laughs> See? This is, shall be thy basket and thy store. This store is not the garage in your house. Or the store where you keep your food. This is something called the storehouse of God. So, but he, you, he said, if you are not understanding spiritual things, how will you understand physical things? So, most times God will use physical English, I mean, physical things around you, and use the English you understand. As a portal for you to start joining on what same words, same terms means in the spiritual. Blessed shall thou be when thou coming in, and blessed thou shalt be when thou goest out. You know, coming is in God in, in the New Testament is coming, coming to like an appearance, like coming to the light. And going is like when you've treated with things, the light of God. He said you will be, and and that shall be, and my and Act one it said, and you shall receive power when Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you'll be my witness. So you will do before you can teach. You will be in secret place before you will be exposed out. So when you say going out, is that the sent out ones? The coming in is the one, you know, 
coming to understand the appearance of God. That is why it said rapture is not that Jesus will appear on the sky. Rapture is when Jesus appears in our hearts. This is sky in our hearts. If there is heaven, then there is skies in our hearts. So, if you can understand all these things, see, the physical one, if you can understand this now, you can relate and stay here. The physical one, see what it says, man. The Holy Spirit is even putting in my heart. Let me say this. Thou sh the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. The enemy that rise up, so they rise us to do it. If they, they have become your enemies. They are they they came to kill you, to steal, to kill and to destroy. He said, What you don't need to do anything. He said, Your enemy will be my enemy. Right now, as you are in your room, <laughs> do you know <laughs> people who are planning to kill you? Behind the scene. Do you know people who are taking your pictures? You know the pictures you put on all the social media. And I, I know that what I just said, and people, some people begin to remove their. You don't need to do that. God has not given you the spirit of faith. See, flood your pictures if you want to flood it. Let them take it. Even some people, they don't even need your picture, they need your name. But if you know your identity with Christ, you don't need to bother fear no one. He says, Your enemy will be my enemy. See, Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. So there are some people that are the offspring of Esau. They are your enemies. The Lord shall cause thy enemy that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before the seven ways. Not two ways, not three ways, seven ways. Ah! But let me tell you, at the time you are still hackling to the voice. As the time that are one leg in today, one leg tomorrow, one leg out tomorrow. Let me tell you, when you do one leg in today, one leg out tomorrow. It's like you are changing gears. It's you, are, you are killing enemies and you are bringing them out. You you kill and you make a life. That's how it is. When you do one leg in today, you go you just obey God today and you disobey God tomorrow. So it's like you are closing it and opening it. There are some that the gate has been opened and the gate of hell will not prevail. But there are some that the gate of hell will never prevail, but they will try. So your choices is like, is like, is is like a gear that. You know when you change from gear one to gear two, you close the gate to gear one and open gate to gear two. And you change gear two to gear three. Some people even they know how to do gear two to gear four, and then, ah, so you play close gates to gear two. And open gate to gear four or gear three. That is how when you make a decision in your heart, you don't know that you are opening gate to close gate to close gate to open gate to open gate to. You are just opening gate to close gate. And if you are <coughs> sorry, and you are changing from gear one to gear two, only in the realm of light. So it's like you are you are finished with a particular dimension of light. And you are going to the higher dimension of light. And when you finish the second one, go to gear three, you are finished with gear two. Just mean and one thing about God is that those gates are not open, they will be open, they will, they, are, they will never be closed, they will be opened to themselves. They are in alignment, they are like prerequisite courses. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settle 
thy hands unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So at that time he would have given you the land. Just like many of us in Christ, he has given us the land, he has given us the inheritance, he has given us Christ. But so we are still one way disobeying God. He said, But the Lord shall cause. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and all that thou settle thy hands unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments. Now, this one is, by the time you get to here, it will be, you know God, Renew the covenant. Meaning that it's not that uh, Jesus will die a second time. No, he will, he will read afresh to you what he has said to you. Apart from covenant of Jesus' death, there are covenants. There are promises of God upon your life. That's why sometimes there are some prophecies that have been said concerning you five, ten years. It has not come to pass. But now God will remind you of those things and say, This is the time. This is the time. So some has, have come to power, but some have not. This is the time. So he said, He will what? He will establish. The Lord shall establish the only people and unto himself. Unto himself now. So <laughs> these things are deep. So before it they are you are not you are holy people. Not unto himself. Probably you are only people in the holy place. You've not got into the most holy place where he sits, where he's enthroned. Praise the Lord. He said, because of my time, my time has gone. But I love I love this thing myself. And I'm not really if you join, you don't join, it's not. I'm not I'm not moved by by crowd. Go and check churches uh, with crowd. Which of which of the word of God are they eating? They don't even want to eat the word of God. They just want their selfish ambition to be met. So they are not in the holy place. They are even in the outer courts. There are still some dimension of light in the outer courts. So you are still a child of God. But you will not go to the next level. Jesus himself chose 12. He didn't choose 200 or 1,000 at the beginning. He chose 12. And he commissioned them. So, if it is one person watching, if it is nobody's watching, <laughs> let me tell you something. Why you are doing a teaching like this? It's not only physical person watching you. Spirits. I'm watching him. I remember I did one to 2017 or 18. I had two weeks headache. I prayed and this headache didn't go. And I asked God, he said, don't worry. Because I have ascended you. So there are something upon you. You have become a headache for Satan. And that's why you are feeling this headache. But don't worry, it will go by itself. When you discover that they cannot do anything, that you'll be ascended, they cannot push you back. They will leave you alone. But what always surprised me is that they will not go and fight God. It is you, they will come and fight. <laughs> because you are the one they are saying. Say, we shall ascend. We shall ascend. So, this is a place of getting ascended to the hill. But this is a process, process of getting ascending you are still ascending you've not gotten to the hill of the lord because the hill of the lord is 20 and it's 12 it's the government 12 means government you can be in the kingdom of light but you are not enthroned as a king that's another thing for all of us we are translated to the kingdom of his dear son and they are to teach us how to rule you can't translate, they can't translate you and put you on the throne. 
No. The most you must learn how to rule over. Do you rule over the people in the light? No. It's a training ground. And many times you have carryovers, you go and do it. You have again, you go and do it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's why I say by saying the righteous man shall fall seven times. You will always be carryovers. Even the one you failed, you've passed, they will bring it again. The one you've passed, they will bring it again. They will bring it in another environment. You know, some people they believe that they can't they can't lie. Like me, I've not I don't like I have not lied. I'm not saying I've not lied. How would I put it? <laughs> I don't like to lie. Personally, if I have to check it, I will say I have not lied. But I won't also say I have not lied. I don't know how to explain the thing. But the point here is that they will now is because in that environment, in the environment we call, even we have convert zone in the kingdom of light. There is a area that you like. They will now go and put you in the particular wilderness and see. Check the motive of your heart and see if you will this if you will transgress. You see, oh, you see, you see, if if and to observe and do all oh, his commandments. So they will not. So the doing, the courses you do. In one phase of God's commandment, they will still bring all the courses back in another phase of God's commandment. So, when you've been promoted in your place of work and you are so happy, yeah, my salary will. The first thing is my salary will increase. And of course, your salary will increase. But when you get there, you discover that your responsibility will increase also. But in the promotion, your promotion in the kingdom of light is not money, that is the first thing. They will add God, God will add his riches to you. And when you are relating with God's riches, the responsibility will be increased. And you don't do this because of money. But let me tell you, God will enlarge your costs. Even it will come when you don't even expect. So you will be looking for jobs and you will be doing jobs. But it will, it will be around you. It will cause your enemies to fall before you. They will try to sack everyone they could not sack you. For them to sack you, it means that God has closed that door. He has opened another seven doors. I'm serving God. Why can't this thing happen to you? Sit down. You know, clear your tears and be at peace and go and pray. Your next level has been open and God wants to glorify himself. The scripture is coming to my mind, but don't let me read it. When some people came to invade the camp of David, he cried until no, no tears again in his eyes. And he said, God, can I should I, should I pursue? Should I overtake? Will I, you know, will I, will I recover all? And God said, pursue, you shall overtake. And you will recover them all. And he did. And the name of the Lord spread. And all that vast thing, and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called. 
by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. So call it the name of Jesus. To do signs and wonders is nothing to God. Do miracles and signs and wonders. In the kingdom of darkness, they do miracles. They prophesy. So if you have to follow a minister of God, watch and pray before you embark on this. Don't just do it out of emotions. There are some influential powers around you. In this room that I am, God is the Holy Spirit is here. But in my street here, there are powers. <laughs> but they will not come and touch me. The only thing they will do is they will begin to market darkness in my heart. You begin to raise imaginations in my heart. Well, let them raise it. I will cast it down. Let them raise it. I will cast it down. Let them raise it. I will cast it down. They will bring it. Your mind is like mirror. Everything appears there. Even if you are the son of God. Jesus himself said, let this cup. If it is thy will, let this cup be taken away. So he saw the cup. They brought... <laughs> when he was going to the next level of his the lasting ending of his pop, of, of his journey Satan eluded his mind with fear and all kind of things so in the middle of his eyes he saw opportunity to bend and not eat drink from that cup but I like the kind of prayer I pray. He said, if it pleases you, it's a prayer. So if you are in difficult challenges right now, and you have the opportunity to shift the cup, I will beg you to pray in wisdom. God, if it pleases you, let this cup be taken. Why? Because you don't want to bend on your choices. You don't want to make a decision to shift the cup away yourself. If Jesus has shifted the cup without even praying, it will still die. The only thing is that if you fail God's causes or one cause of God's subjects for your life, Hmm? Hmm. You see that carryover? To take that carryover. So if you if you fail God's test to to take the to do that test again. So that it will not still die for this. It will still die. But the experiences it will pass through. They will threaten to kill. If it is, it is as if they will not even pluck his eyes or kill or remove his ears or you know cut his hand before he will eventually die. So I love the prayers. Say, if it is thy will, let this cup be taken away. So read this thing till verse 14 as an assignment, not from me, from God to you. And you'll see that these are the rewards. You know, inheritance alone. <laughs> inheritance is not a reward. Because the reward comes when you've done something. Like you send a child to go and buy you a bottle of coke and when she comes or he comes you give him keep the change that's a reward that's a reward but the reward to god
is that the gift the world is like gift the world is like um, you know in that matthew 25 god gave three people gave one one talent gave two two talent gave second two talent gave third one five talent see the reward of doing that talent trading with that talent either in investment or in trading you see but you can see in that scripture it is the one that traded with that talent that got more not the one that invested that talent because if you invest the talent it's not it's not increasing you it's increasing the company where you invested it to but they will give you your own dividend but if you traded with the talent it it increase your water you see that's why god was, jesus said to the one that buried the one said if you know you cannot trade it why can't you invest it you have two options you have two people around you in, in, in your that i gave around you together one traded with it one invested it at least you cannot trade with it you can't you should have invested it in the first place instead of burying it on the ground so the one that traded it they gave the one that buried his talent they gave it to the one that traded with it they didn't give it to the one that invested it So every reward of God is not the reward called thank you son. Like you send somebody to go and buy you a bottle of coke and you give him the change. The reward of God always places you higher. It's of higher responsibility. We make you governors, mayors of his cities. So if you if 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 you have you are trading with thirty percent of the of your editors, everything that will be added to you will be you know according to the percentage that are given to you. Bible talks about thirty four sixty four sixty four to hundred four. So his blessing shall come upon you will be around in you know the blessings will be around that for that thirty percent. Not the overall inheritance. So these are the things, these are the reward that comes upon you when you do. To observe and to do because not everybody that will minister that actual one say these are the things which we've seen Jesus do and teach if you are observing you will do and if you do you will teach And all the nations of the house will bow down under your feet. Obedience is very, very powerful. Obedience means that you are you are trading with your inheritance. Your inheritance is meant to be traded with. You are increasing. Is it, is it Matthew 5 that says uh,
this Mark 2 5 5 says, Better are the meek, for they shall inherit their hearts. Is it possible for a physical man to inherit the heart? Even the richest man in the world. Is he inheriting the heart? Because there will never be one richest man in the world. Another one will come and overtake him. So if it's, if inheriting inheriting the heart means literally then one person will inherit the heart nobody will inherit it or there will be one that will inherit the heart the other ones will still be inheriting some portion of the heart to inherit the heart there is not literal and it's not physical So go and read Genesis 2 very well, meditate on it. I know it, but I've never had the time to teach it. Because if I have to teach it, I have to be serious. It can be a month serious, every day, Monday to Saturday, for one month. To finish Genesis 2 alone. But this heart, they are the unseen heart. The heart that had and was, was the unseen heart. And the heart that was in that unseen heart is the hidden man of the heart. So when you are matured spiritually, there is nothing you see upon the earth that will not stand. But when you are not fully matured, you will see something it will not happen. But you will see many things it will happen. But you will see something it will not happen. Even if God wants to protect you, it will not even make, make you to see things that will not happen because that door has not been opened to you. Yet, I close like this be the one that will stand in the gate of the Lord, be the one that, that will stand at the gate of the Lord, and when you stand. Teach his people. That was what Jesus told his disciple. Was it Peter or John? He said, Teach my people. But before you can teach the people, keep passing God's test. Don't have a leftover. Don't have carryovers. You fall, but make sure you have or you ask for grace to stand. And when you stand, the Bible says stand firm. Because by the time you are standing firm, the, the, the evil spirit will come. You stand. That is where your security is. That is where your protection is. Adam's protection was in the commandment of God for him. So he never for one opened up the channel to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So stay secured. Stand. Follow all the process. Pass all the tests. Do all the needful. Pray. Without sin. Read your scriptures. Read your Bible. And don't just read scripts. Meditate on the script, observe and do. Then God will place you above all the nations of the earth. I'm also in the process of making. And I'm teaching my cry. You can only be a minister if you have if you have shared this in growth. May God bless you and increase you and make his face to shine upon you. His love that he has, he has shed abroad in your heart. May you join him to see the blessings 
secret of love that are hidden in this love for you. May you journey and do everything that obedience to much. in the love of God. May you have the mercy and grace to handle the love of God and to be the one that go away, not be able to share with anyone in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Hallelujah. See you next time.